on two dope boys and a podcast, which Phil, uh, Waz is a crew member of. It is co-hosted by Phil McKenzie and myself. Shouts to Phil. Shouts to Phil. We do a segment called The Brand F-Up of the Week. And usually it's either a story of sort of grand corporate malfeasance like <laughs> Volkswagen, like you know, global scheme to evade admission standards, or it's, uh, or often it's something racial, like a brand accidentally endorsed like genocide of the Maya or something because they don't have someone in their, you know, uh, studio that speaks the language they're talking about, right? Uh, it's ridiculous. But on this past week's uh, show, oh my God. we t talked about this thing that popped recently called, uh, the safety pin box. Now, I'm already not a fan of the safety pin to begin with. And I, <laughs> let me, and I, and actually, I, I now I kind of have a justification as to why. I found out recently that in the UK, after Brexit, which is where the safety pin comes from, that meant something. And this is actually maybe worth clipping even in, a, in and of itself. It meant literally in the UK, if you're wearing a safety pin, that you're someone who is willing to you know, not get into a fight or whatever necessarily, but put yourself physically on the line or intervene if you see someone getting beat if they're an immigrant, as an example. We saw after Brexit passed, just like after Trump, there was racially motivated attacks. And the safety pin meant that if I see like a woman who's a Muslim on a train getting her, you know, uh, getting her, her, her scarf pulled, like I'm going to intervene. It sort of and, meant run toward me. Yeah, like it, it, it meant an actual thing. Yeah. Now, in the United States, it's basically come to meant like, I mean, I voted for Hillary and <laughs> I don't really like what's going on. Um, <laughs> so that's a distinction, right? Now, these two women, one of whom uh, we will remember from interrupting a, a Bernie speech uh, where in, in Seattle. And I remember at the time, I actually even defended that one. I said, look, I think Bernie in the beginning out the gate he needed a much stronger message on civil rights. He needed a much stronger message on violence. He needed to be able to, you know, make more of those kind of arguments. Um, but now, basically, I mean, Waz, would you would you explain the safety pin box to uh, to people and uh, and what your thoughts were on it? Because we we went over this on Dope Boys and we just laid into it. Well, basically, it's like when I think of these kits, these monthly kits, like uh, you know, there's there's like this. I forget, and I'm drawing a blank on the name, but it's like for black women, it's like got all of these beauty products and all it. It's like this idea of like this is how you stay fresh, clean, right. beautiful for black women. Like right. it's because there's not a lot of products out there on the market. Right. Is you know you can't just show up to Walmart and have a a huge supply. So we're basically curating that for you, and you pay a monthly subscription, and this is what you get. Right. The you know the idea that you would trans transfer that now into becoming a you know and I know this is a, a pejorative on the internet a social justice warrior yeah <laughs> you know it's just it's comical it's laughable right. the stakes are just way too high for something like this to actually ever be meaningful much less work in any meaningful and then um, it's like it gets back to that phrase that I always use with like the pseudo woke neoliberalism. Like, we're getting to a point where yeah. it felt like in the during the primary, there was that split that got opened up between, you know, like economic justice and social justice, which is a stupid split, in my opinion. They're very interdependent issues. And then there were people on one extreme side that definitely were like, they pretty much don't want to talk about identity. They only want to talk about economics, and that's a problem. And then on the other hand, you had people that were like, you know, I mean... The, they just didn't want to talk about economics, period. Right. Everything is just identity driven. And that and that your only kind of function in politics is simply just like a function of your pre-existing category. Right. And to me, the irony of this is like on one hand, it's like a hilarious scam, in my opinion. And it's also <laughs> like what kind of dummy could you hit up for a hundred bucks a month? You know, I mean, I'll tell you what's and then and then know. and then also, ironically, like, well, if if a cash transfer more mail order catalog is the answer to systemic race, it like, I I guess a lot of like 
structural institutions of racism, white supremacy, and repression can breathe a big sigh of relief because somebody in you know so Park weak. Slope is going to take care of it. Yeah, uh, by it, sending these these ladies a check. You know, uh, the the one I forget what publication printed this, but it was about this white lady who had moved to uh, Inwood or Washington Heights. Right. And she basically wrote a piece just being annoyed by the loudness of the neighborhood <laughs> in the summer months, right? And it's and you know and in the and summer months. And, and it's one of you know that's what people so loud during the, <laughs> the summer music, months. The music it just doesn't stop. <laughs> And you know, uh, and, and that's that's one of those typical things where liberals point and be like, "You're so ridiculous! Don't you know it's a gentrifier? You need to appreciate the culture of that neighborhood." It's one of those things where like liberals often think that decrying, decrying that type of behavior, that type of attitude, is more important than you know actually caring about workers' rights. Right. You know, like it's this idea that those two are in this in the same category of this equal importance. Right. You know, it's like being annoyed by Dominican people in their ways in Washington Heights is somehow in the same category of how much people get paid, the hours they're worked, you know, vacation time, family leave. Like that it doesn't matter. Well, in I mean, the you know what it is, it's one thing to say that it's interdependent and connected sure. versus like you can do like you can achieve those same functions just by through not a, being annoyed by loud music and yeah in and then it all just becomes like and everything is and and the irony and that was another thing that annoyed me again about what I would call the dumb dumb left and I know I, I whatever I don't want to get into it but like it isn't a, voting isn't about your personal conscience voting is about how you participate in much larger systemic conversations it isn't about just your personal conduct and what kind of was amazing to me about that box was like it's the wrappings of radicalism but the message is like the most market commodified <laughs> you know kind of joke i've ever seen hey it's sam cedar why don't you uh subscribe to this channel you can do so right uh right over here that some over subscribe subscribe